Hello everybody, I'm in the ceramics studio today uh, taking just a little break from electronics but don't worry I'll be back in the electronics lab before you know it. Um, in my first YouTube video I showed uh, how to throw a simple pot and it's, fat, it's this pillar on the right hand side and um, I've trimmed it, I've fired it, it's bisque fired ready to be glazed. Um, but I realised I hadn't actually shown you how to uh, do any of that trimming so uh, I'm going to do that today. Um, when the pots come off the wheel they're not always quite ready to be bisque fired um, they sometimes need a little bit of uh, tidying up and also some surface decoration. And in fact, if we look at this guy here, um, as well as having a nice foot, he's also been tidied up and, and, a, and a, a pattern has been created around its uh, edge. Uh, and this is what's called a chattered pattern. We actually have a device that presses against it and bounces backwards and forwards as, as it turns, creating a random, uh, interesting cut pattern. And uh, yeah, I'll show you how I go about doing that later in the video. So I've actually got four pots and um, you can see there's still some of them are still sitting on the bats that they've been turned on and uh, I'd like to take a quick assessment so for example this is supposed to be straight sided um, but it's got a bit of a, a lump in it and obviously its foot needs tidying up but I like its overall shape I think its top might be a bit lopsided as well. This guy on the right is a mug pretty happy with it but uh, it's quite thick and uh, I made it thick because uh, I intend to uh, carve some um, shape into it to carve a texture into it over here we've got kind of um, what's more like a plant pot type thing um, and this is pretty good overall I just need to tidy up the foot and really the same with this guy here this is a bigger sort of uh, uh, container you might just use this for spoons or something like that in the kitchen it's about seven inches high so it's deceptive on the actual picture but um, it's stuck to the uh, the base it needs wiring off but overall its shape is uh, is pretty good it's not going to need a lot of work so the first job is pretty much always the same just remove it off the bat uh, i dry these on the bats that i turn them on so i turn it i wire it through and then i leave it on there to uh, to dry sometimes they separate sometimes they do not but anyway i can take a wire and i can run it through carefully um, keeping it stretched tight against the board and it will suddenly pop free without any problem at all uh, and that's it I just need to do that to them all so I throw it on the bat I dry it on the bat and sometimes um, when I wire it while it's still on the wheel it uh, stays on center and uh, and actually sticks a little bit to the bat when it dries and uh, I can actually then uh, just continue working on the wheel I can just put the bat back in the wheel and work on it but uh, often that doesn't work uh, and I take them off the bat and center them up again on the wheel to do the trimming as we'll see in a minute so pots have to be recentered on the wheel for trimming and there's several ways of doing that one is that uh, you kind of tap it into the center of the wheel and then you put little blobs of clay around it to hold it in place another is you wet the aluminium surface tap the item into place and then just press down lightly and it will get a little bit sticky and stick on and some people use sticky pads this is uh, I think it's called a griffin grip or griffin bat and uh, it comes with various uh, of these little blue things but um, as you turn the top of the wheel they slide in and out um, it's actually a spiral chuck and uh, so it pretty much centers the uh, the workpiece now truthfully i found this a pain in the neck to set up this is a 15 inch wheel and yeah it, it wasn't very easy to actually set up the adjustment to get it exactly in the center and it's about half a half a millimeter out and it just annoys me a little bit but uh, for quick production work and things like that it's perfectly adequate and uh, and saves a bit of time but uh, i'm not going to do it all with this i'll do a couple with this and a couple with some lumps of clay just to show you the difference now tool wise i'm starting off with uh, i've got a a knife here and a, a bit of wood and here are some cheap uh, tools um, these are just in a set uh, a little starter set and they, they work pretty well they're okay um i like the tight round profile You'll see me in fact using both of these tools uh, as we progress um, it's worth keeping them a little bit sharp just get a, a honing stone every now and again and just touch them up uh, i'm not talking about razor sharp like a knife but uh, you know if they're not sharp and they're not smooth then you're not going to get a nice smooth finish on your clay and keep them clean of clay when you're working you'll see me cleaning them off quite frequently um, what what's the uh, wooden knife for well actually i'm going to use it for um just as a, as a quick and easy measurement to work out step one and step one is always measure the thickness of the bottom of the pot 
and assess the thickness of the walls so you know how much clay you have to work with. You do not want to go through the bottom. So we just drop down the uh, knife behind the... Uh, I just realised there's an extra line on this that I need to just remove, but uh, a wet finger will do that. Um, so you drop the knife down behind the piece of wood, draw a line, uh, and that's the, uh, that's the outside height. You drop it down again in the middle of the pot. Draw a second line. There we go. And the difference between the two, which in this case is about 12 millimetres, is uh, maybe 10 millimetres, is the thickness of the bottom of the pot. Obviously, just look out. If there's a lump in the middle or something like that, then, uh, then just put the knife to one side a little bit. Um, but that's it. That's perfectly accurate. You don't actually need to know in numeric terms how thick it is. Uh, you just need a visual representation so you know how much you can carve out of the bottom. And uh, yeah, and this is the Griffin grip, just centering the, the pot up. Now, I should have mentioned this clay is what's called leather hard. Um, it's hard enough that it doesn't leave fingerprints. Um, it holds its shape and things like that. And you can hold it in a little vice structure, as you can see. But it's also soft enough that you can carve it and it will come out like cheese, um, that sort of uh, carving. Um, so you don't want it uh, too dry because it'll be all crumbly and give you a bad result. Now, you will notice that the bottom appears to wobble a little bit, despite the fact that the uh, one side is, is centred, the other end isn't, and that's pretty normal. There are often some little drying stresses and things like that occurring, um, unless you've got a really good drying room and uh, you take it fully off the bat and all that sort of stuff. But uh, it doesn't matter. We will just assess where we're going to make our uh, trims and, uh, and get it uh, nice and right. Um, this isn't production where that has to be identical. This is artisan individual pieces. Um, and uh, what matters is we get a flat bottom, that the shape is correct, everything's good. Um, not that there is, uh, you know, less than a thousandth of a millimetre error in the walls. So um, let's get started. And uh, we're going to start with the bottom. And the reason I start with the bottom is um, because I'm going to have to turn this the other way up. And if I start with the... Uh, top then it will be clamped and um, that isn't so good so you kind of have to wiggle the um, the knife around a little bit try and just get the feel for where it cuts where it doesn't cut um, and um, there's two techniques one is you can hold the knife and not put your finger on the pot like I'm doing at the moment um, and that means the knife stays in a set position and can trim off and actually center up the bottom compared to the wheel. The other is you can put your finger on the uh, on some sort of datum point, so to speak, and then the blade will follow your finger as your finger sort of undulates. So and uh, so the, the foot will stay concentric with the, in this case, the, the rest of the cup. Now you can go reasonably fast. You don't want to be a silly speed. Um, if the bits of clay are flying off the side and uh, kind of littering your room up, you're going too fast. Um, but equally, if you go too slow, then um, you know each cut has to go all the way around your pot. Uh, and if you go slow, it's hard to keep everything steady. And you'll see that I'm using the tools at a slight angle here. And one of the reasons for that is if you use a curve tool at an angle, it essentially creates a, um, a tighter radius than the actual uh, edge of the tool. So, um, so varying that... Um, and not only does it alter the radius, but it also enables you to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, get more of a, a slicing cut instead of a scraping cut. Um, and this is the sort of texture that should be coming off, little ribbons of it um, easily pairing off the, uh, off the sides. And all I'm doing here is I'm just actually blending in um, and trying to get a more noticeable foot on it. If you've got a foot on a piece, there kind of actually has to be an actual foot, not just sort of the start of a foot. Um, you want it to really be there. And I've got enough clay here to be able to take a, a, a little bit off. I just need to remember when I'm carving this uh, to the next stage, that because uh, I'm going to be carving the walls of this, that uh, I mustn't carve the low part because I've already thinned it. Okay, so it's time to cut a recess into the foot, and I quite like to use this little tool for it. Um, so essentially, we're going to gouge out the centre of the uh, of the foot, 
and uh, there's various ways to start you can start in the middle work out you can start at the edge I like to put a little uh, delineating line around the edge just using the corner just so I know where I'm working up to <clears throat> now um, you don't need to go the full depth um, we'll, we'll adjust that later on um, it is however just with this cut happens to be going a bit shallow so I'm just going to change the uh, the position so I normally start in the middle uh, and I sort of drill in a little bit and uh, get a sort of few millimeters of depth not a huge amount and then I just start moving outwards and I personally just find that that works for me some people as I say move from outside to inside and some people try very hard to get a very flat finish all the time I just kind of let it go as it's going to go um, obviously I want it horizontal um, now one thing to point out is on this one the rim itself was very very planar um, obviously the bottom which is where we're working um, does need to be a flat plane otherwise it's going to rock um, now in this case it happened to be okay so I didn't need to do any work but sometimes you kind of actually need to uh, uh, flatten that out and make sure it's a, a flat plane around the rim of the bottom um, and yeah so okay and I'll just keep kind of working this out sometimes I leave a spiral sometimes uh, in the bottom I quite like the effect and you can kind of see that uh, all I have to do for that is to turn the wheel fairly slowly and move out at a nice steady rate and I end up with a spiral sometimes I work backwards and forwards and, you know just do whatever works with the clay um, and uh, if you're not quite sure how deep you've gone then just put a straight edge across it rule it all that piece of wood again and you can just uh, you can just see you'll probably find you haven't gone as deep as you think initially at least okay and finally I'm just checking the uh, edge of the recess because it's got a little bit uh, fuzzy instead of being crisp and clean so I'm just cleaning that off and making sure that it's uh, got a nice profile uh, yeah okay and I think uh, uh, I'm just breaking the corner so there isn't a really really sharp corner there I don't like any sharp corners uh, at all now you can easily end up with one on the outer edge of the uh, sort of rim if you like and uh, you can actually just put your finger on it and uh, and that will break the corner enough um, but actually ceramic uh, sharp ceramic corners can be very hard now I'm just using a polish this is actually a, a stainless steel knife but it's got a very good polish on it and uh, I'm just pressing it down and uh, all this is doing is compressing the surface of the clay and, uh, and making it really really smooth and uh, particularly wanted to do that on the uh, on the rim where it's going to be touching uh, the tabletop and, and things like that you don't want a kind of uh, you don't want to be like sandpaper you want a smooth piece of ceramic um, that doesn't leave scratches or anything like that um, so I kind of always do the bottom contact points but you can do across the bottom and make it shiny like I have here um, and uh, you, in fact you can do the whole thing if you want you just need to find some implements of the right shape some people use stones um, some of the, the burnishing tools but uh, but it's called burnishing and it's just uh, literally you're just pressing in the surface uh, of the clay now if you want to do um, rounded edges you must keep the tool moving constantly um, any uh, any attempt to sort of let the tool rest in one place for a second and you'll create a flat um, which is not what you want um, okay and remember of course that if you do leave a sharp edge and you're glazing that edge um, you're not going to be glazing the foot but uh, you, know, you, you might glaze the inner circle of this foot but um, if you're going to glaze across an edge the, uh, the the glaze will often break across that edge and may pull back from it so uh, you may not get the uh, result you expect but anyway that's basically this mug is finished uh, I'll turn it over and just tidy up the uh, the rim on the other side to make sure it's nice to drink from but uh, other than that we're, we're done with this one I'll switch across to something else and I'll show you a different technique oh yeah and actually I'm just gonna sign it and uh, you should have a very soft brush as well because um, for example when I'm signing this then I did kind of just raise up little bits of clay 
and uh, also when I'm when I'm trimming it you get little bits of clay that you need to brush off um, you don't want to try and pick them off with your finger because you actually end up pressing them into the surface then you have a rough surface which is exactly the opposite of what you're trying to attain okay on to the next pot just wiping off the pencil marks from my knife and measuring the height um, there we go and measuring the inside and uh, just just look out whether the uh, the bottom's got a particular curve in or anything like that you want the lowest point and uh, yeah there we go um, so uh, yeah we're about uh, 10 to 12 millimeters again and for larger pots like this that tends to be the thickness I end up with smaller pots I tend to end up with about six or seven um, but uh, yeah it just happens by look almost okay um, I'm not going to spend too long on this because this is basically uh, trim up the uh, trim up the bottom um, but I am going to just tidy up the top edge and uh, I'll just show you that bit um, and actually I'll show you how I fasten this on because uh, of course I'm going to fasten this one on with clay globs this time okay so I start off by just uh, sort of visually centering it uh, and then I choose a point in this case about sort of an inch up and I put my finger near it hold my finger really really steady and rotate the item very very slowly uh, and I can see how much that is moving to and from my, my finger now let's say for example that the clearance is uh, a centimeter so you can see here at the bottom it's pretty much right and then higher up it's still moving around so I've got to make some decisions how I deal with that um, but let's say for example that I need to move it across by a cent there's a centimeter gap how much do I move it five millimeters um, that's because I move it half the gap because you know I need to half it on one side and I'll make it it will transfer to the other so um, so yeah so we're just going to lightly tap this until I am happy um, with the with the centered point uh, and then we're going to basically stick it to the board so to stick it down I use the same clay that I use to make the uh, the body just in case uh, it stains um, and I hold the, the pot in place and then I put the clay on and I kind of shape it round in a circle now I'm not sticking it to the pot I'm actually sticking these sort of little sausages of clay and bending them round the pot and sticking them hard to the actual wheel as you press down it will kind of push in towards the pot a little bit and overlap and grip um, and that's all that's needed now most of the time you'll notice I'm keeping my hand on top of the pot and that's to stop the force from the cutting from uh, throwing it off center and tearing it off the board it's very easy to knock this off the uh, off the wheel and uh, should it start to wobble at all then um, just go back and uh, retighten that clay around the bottom but uh, but essentially that's all there is um, some people use kind of like a disc with a bearing in it on the on the bottom because they can put a bit more pressure on um, I kind of like to just rest my hand lightly on it and press down lightly and it gives me a lot of feedback about what's going on um, now on this case you can see that I'm actually keeping my cutting blade uh, I'm not using the pot to guide it I'm keeping it in one place um, so I'm actually bracing my hand against the plastic tub not the pot and the result of that is that I'm actually kind of centering up the bottom uh, and then I'm kind of using um, the pot to guide the next cut to uh, to make the shape consistent um, so centering is done by resting your hand on the wall of the sort of trough that the wheels on um, whereas um, cutting a line to follow um, is done by resting your finger on the pot just like I am here and using that to guide the cutting blade so the cutting blade always moves the same the same depth of cut um, and uh, using those two techniques you can either bring things into center or you can live with some error that's on your pot up to you how you want to deal with that so uh, the reason I'm cutting the side of this pot is that I just want to blend in um, some of the uh, some of the cuts that I've made at the bottom and just as before those cuts were just to uh, make the foot more prominent so okay um, let's go across and we'll look at me doing the other side of the pot now because we've already seen me do a bottom this is just going to be exactly the same so exactly the same method of centering and sticking the globs of clay down and now I'm just uh, trimming up the edge now it's not 
obvious how my blade is staying in place but generally speaking I'm just sort of synchronizing my hands and uh, the hands are very close and even touching each other sometime and first of all I'm just roughly cutting the the shape uh, to make sure it's nice and rounded really um, the edges do matter now this happened to have a little sort of scuff on it so um, there's no choice it had to be done and uh, as usual it just you just have to sort of blend it in you don't want it to suddenly look as though oh look he cut that little piece but he didn't cut the rest of it and uh, doing very shallow cuts not taking much off at all okay and uh, as I described before the important thing with curved surfaces um, once you've kind of done your roughing out is that you must keep that blade moving constantly um, now I would like to sort of show you me trimming the inside but it's really the same thing there's just a bit of a, a roughness around that inner edge and I just want to take that off um, so I'm just kind of like planing it out almost really um, but then I'll just move up to the top edge and round it in and just make sure everything blends it's all about blending and not having any obvious transitions unless you want transitions of course uh, I would like to show you on the side but I just just can't operate my hands in reverse yeah and uh, that's not really doing much i won't bother with that so that's pretty good um so we've got the burnishing tool out again and you can see that uh, having got started i'm moving that around a little bit kind of constantly particularly on the very curved surfaces just you just have to keep moving it there's no two ways about it and the wheels turning medium it's not fast not slow I mean definitely not fast but uh, yeah so if you left that if you leave that knife in position for any time at all really you just get a flat now don't panic if you do because just you know wiggle it backwards and forwards like I'm doing here until you're happy with the result and that's my other hand here is actually also resting and running on the inside and uh, the general rule is if you put pressure on one side of things you must have a support on the other this is a thin clay it's only six millimeters thick it's a really thin clay wall you know if you press on it with no support on the other side it's just gonna it's just gonna crumble okay i think that's enough of that pot so i quite like this pot um it started off with really straight sides but um when i turned the uh, the lip out at the top um I accidentally caused a little bit of a, a dent in there now the sides are actually pretty thick so I do have sufficient space to sort of plane them um, and make them um, just flat um, again I say flat I, I mean you know a straight line from one end to the other instead of having a big what's well, sort of like a hump and a dip in it but overall I like the profile um, so I'm going to just uh, I mean I'll do the same sort of trimming you've seen before I'll have it face uh, sort of top down uh, and I will just uh, trim away these sides until they are pretty much flat uh, and then we'll cut uh, some sort of design into it um, so for this job I'm using a slightly different tool it's actually just a bent hacksaw blade with a straight edge to it uh, and I'm just kind of running that up and down to create this very nice straight edge so uh, you just uh, take a hardened hacksaw blade uh, snap it in half heat it up with the uh, red hot and then bend it with a pair of pliers keep your hands away of course and um, then sharpen the uh, the square end or sharpen the shape onto it as needs be but uh, it certainly helps um, with getting everything nice and uh, flat to have a flat edged cutting tool um, now you do have to be quite careful because it's quite thin and uh, I'm going to go across now and just do a little bit more work on it because uh, I have left quite a lot of scratches in the surface because uh, I took the majority of the clay off quite quickly so so now I just need to uh, finesse it a bit and get a nice finish so if you're going to have a patterned area and a non-patterned area um, and there are areas of transition it makes sense to actually have a specific sort of demarcation between them so I've just put a small groove in there and uh, I'm going to turn it into a more defined line I don't want to go too deep here um, but here we go here's another line here so these two lines will mark the edge of the textured area and I will actually put another 
line near the foot as well to uh, to balance the whole thing out because uh, two lines at the top and nothing at the bottom it's going to look a bit weird okay here we go let's do the chattering so i just need to hold this so it's very springy and uh, i think you can just see it beginning to vibrate and normally this is something you would avoid like the devil and i'm pressing reasonably hard I start off fairly light just to get the chatter started and then I press a bit harder further in and uh, yeah you can see the pattern that has formed as a result and literally all it's doing is just springing backwards and forwards um, you know alternatively cutting and bouncing off cut and bounce off uh, all the time and it forms a really nice pattern um, so I'm turning it the right way up to cut this uh, line near the bottom partly because uh, it's difficult to get the kind of aesthetic feel for where it should be if the cup is the well pot is the wrong way up um, so um, yeah so i think i've got that sketched out in the right place i'm just going to make it uh, a little bit more rounded edged so that uh, we didn't get too strong a break of the uh, glaze at that point um because you know we don't want another pattern there we will distract from the one at the top um, but uh, we just just want to mark there so that it balances the oval pot and of course i will also take the opportunity now to uh, uh to to touch up the uh, the rim at the top and make sure that that is dead smooth and uh, tapers off to a nice thin finish um, but we've already kind of seen that on the uh, other pot so uh, i'm not going to show that again okay so that one's uh, pretty much finished i think i'm pretty happy with that uh, yeah looks good pattern looks good delineation of areas is good so i'm just going to fast forward through this last one because it's uh, more of the same really uh, flattening the bottom uh, trimming up the bottom putting a recess in it blending all the foot in and all that sort of stuff making the uh, top corner smooth um, and uh, here are the uh, four pots on the shelf drying now now they're on a piece of cardboard at the moment that's just because the wire shelf would uh, dig in a little bit and mark them but as soon as they're uh, uh, properly dried then uh, or further dried then uh, they'll just rest on the wire rack to uh, get plenty of air circulation um, and uh, you can tell that they're dried because they feel well, not warm to the touch but they don't feel cold to the touch they look dry before they are dry um, if you touch them and they strike cold then they're still a little bit damp inside um, so just leave them a bit longer and uh, and that's it i think um, so i hope you enjoyed this video uh, if you did please give it a thumbs up press the like button whatever's on your screen of course leave some comments down below and please if you haven't already done so go ahead and subscribe and uh, I'll see you next time.